everyone. I'm Jen Liddy of Jen Liddy Coaching and Development. And as you may know, if you've been following along, I work with creative women who are working to bring an idea that is burning inside of them to life. Today, I am interviewing Gwen Crossett. And you're going to just find when you watch Gwen that she is full of life and full of energy and she's going to inspire you. Gwen has been in the healthcare industry. She's been working in healthcare for over 25 years and she's been an RN for the last 15 years. And she made a leap that I really am excited for her to tell you about today. She made a leap from being an RN and working for somebody else to creating her own company. She's the founder and CEO of Constant Care 24-7. And what that company does is Gwen serves as a consultant for families and people in need of home care. And there's lots of different reasons why somebody might need home care. But Gwen's mission and passion is to help these families get the care that they need, uh, whether she and her company can provide it or somebody else in the community can provide it. She's the conduit. She's the place that people go when they need home care and services. So Gwen, I know that you're an incredibly busy lady and I really appreciate you giving me your time today. Thank you so much. Not a problem. I'm I'm glad to be here. So I would love if you could tell everybody, because you'll do a much better job than I will, of who you were and the leap that you made to bring your dream to life. Um, you know, about 25 years ago, I was um, on track to be a master's level social worker. Um, and it really wasn't my dream. It was really my dream to become a nurse. But for some reason, I just wouldn't, didn't take that path. And then I got a job one day at a um, inpatient psychiatric and substance abuse center. And I saw the nurses there. And I was like, you know what? I want to do that. I don't want to do this that I was going to school for. So I stopped, you know, raised, raised a couple of kids for, for a little while. And then I went back to school as a for, regist- for my registered nurse degree. Um, and, you know, my kids were three and six, and, and I did a self-study program at Onondaga Community College um, and completed that in, in a very timely manner because I, I was on a mission because, you know, people told me I couldn't do it in two years, and I did it. Of course you did. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> tell tell I did. Gwen she can't do something, and then she'll do it twice as fast. Exactly. That's, that's the motivating factor for me is when people tell me I can't do things. So I, I went, I, you know, went to school, graduated and started working in a hospital and, um, it was great. I loved it. Um, but my kids needed me on the weekends. So I left that setting and went into a home care setting where I, you know, had a nicer part-time schedule with no weekends. Um, did that for a little while. And then I had a, a, my daughter, And then I did some, what they call on call for home care. And I would go all over the county and just really do everything when, when, when that home care agency was closed. So I learned a a ton of information. And then I went to um, another sector of this company and um, worked in a home care, the home care setting for assisted livings and did that for about nine years. Um, so altogether I was at the company, I believe it was 13 years Mm -hmm. and I, I have nothing bad to say. It was great. It was, it was mostly part time. You know, I worked a little bit harder when my son went to college. Um, I always had more than one job through my career. You You like to work. You like to, you like to have a lot of things in the air at the same time. I do. I do. Um, Jen knows me when things start to get comfortable, I start to get bored (laughs) So I start, you know, mixing it up a little bit, but in a good way. Right. Um, so I, uh, you know, my kids were older. One was, was graduating college. One was in college. And then my daughter was able to stay home alone after school. She's, you know, 12. And um, I just always knew that there was something that I needed to do for myself. Mm-hmm. And that was start my own business. And I, I tried a, a variety of different things before this particular business started. And I just, I kept searching and searching. I was, oh, I just, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up. How, how did it feel? This, this, you, you said you knew that you always wanted to do this thing for yourself, which was starting a business. Can you describe what that felt like? Well, I have, to, I kind of believe that I am um, a progressive thinking individual and I, you know, worked in a corporate setting with large corporation, um, with a lot of moving parts. 
And, um, if, you know, if anybody knows the healthcare industry here up in upstate New York or New York state above, above Westchester is that we're not a very progressive bunch of people. Mm -hmm. and um, it just takes us longer to get things going. You know, if we were out in Oregon or California, you know, people have been doing this and starting their own business. And, and, and so I just, I just was like a dog with a bone. I wouldn't stop until I, I just came up with this idea. And um, finally I just said to myself, you know what, I'm not getting any younger. And I, if I don't do this now, I'm not going to do it. Um, so I made a plan and gave my notice and started working on my company, um, opened, you know, technically it was April fool's day of 2017, <laughs> but I like to tell everybody it was March 29th. <laughs> um, and I just, I, I, I just, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew I was going to do it. And I always said to myself, I'm a nurse. If this doesn't work. I can go back to nursing in a, in a more traditional way. And, you know, not, not everybody is as lucky as, as this particular profession because there's so much need. So that was, that was a comforting feeling to me, but I can totally understand the, the fear mm -hmm. of, of having to make this leap, you know? Right. So you were leaving your, you were leaving your paycheck in order to create a paycheck for yourself. Um, how was the dream in your head? What did it look like? You know, it, it didn't really look like anything in the beginning. It just looked like, you know, I left the paycheck. And not only did I leave the paycheck, I left the 401k that I had been, you know, contributing to thir for 13 years. Um, I left my health insurance. My husband's self-employed. So, you know, that was a huge motivating factor for me to continue to work in corporate America. And, and you know, you talk about that, Jen, that you're a teacher and people do their teaching and they're going to get their pension. And a lot of people are miserable and a lot of people are miserable in, in healthcare as well. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't want to be one of those people. And I'm not saying I was miserable because I love being a nurse. I love it. I, I There's never been a time where I hate it or don't like it. Um, I love to call myself a registered nurse. I, I respect the profession and I respect everybody that does all of those hard, hard things out there because this is hard too, yes. but it's not as hard as doing some other types of nursing. You know, I hear a lot of people who I talk to who have made the leap. Sometimes they're in the lowest of the low places in their job and they just like can't take it anymore. But a lot of successful women I talk to, are at the place where you describe, you're, you're just kind of like, I love it and I could keep doing it, but I know there's something more, or I feel a little like itch or uh, that I need to scratch. Like you weren't saying you were miserable and you hated it. You wanted to create something more. And I also think you wanted to have some control that that was, that freedom piece was really important to you, right? Oh yes. Yes, absolutely. You know, again, I, I was in a fortunate situation where I had a great um, supervisor or boss or director or whatever you want to call her. She, she was, she kind of let me not do my own thing because we had, we had program standards that we had to meet, but she didn't micromanage me and she let me grow and change. And she also let me think outside the box sometimes and probably is, was instrumental in giving me the confidence to be able to leave and do something like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that environment is, was, it was a little bit, you know, I was, like I said, why don't we do it this way? Or why don't, why is, why is this getting done this way? Why aren't we, you know, doing it? And, and so when you're in that environment, and you have those ideas. Sometimes the people that you're working with, they don't want to hear you. They're because, threatened by it sometimes. They could be threatened by it or people just don't want to like change, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it hurts to change. It uh, is uncomfortable. You know, when I left my job, there are people out there that obviously didn't think I could make it. Mm -hmm. And of course, tell me I can't do something and I'm going to do it 55,000 times over. And so far, guess what? I have, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it is scary. I, yes. I have a husband. I mean, there are certain things that I, you know, have that, that maybe other people don't, but, um, I, I, I wouldn't change. I haven't looked back for 30 seconds mm -hmm. and it's not just because I can call myself a CEO and founder now it's because I can control my destiny. And I remember people saying to me, you know what, if you do what you love, the money's going to come. If you do it, you, and I never really believed that. Mm -hmm. And 
then I, then I kind of did believe it when I left and I'm like, you know what? I am doing what I love and the money is coming, which is great. You know, bring to Onondaga County. Uh, we, we all know that this, this, this is not the easiest thing to, or easiest place to live sometimes. Um, well, I, think that for, I think for entrepreneurs, um, people who are not entrepreneurs or who are not yet entrepreneurs, their big fear is, and the story, well, this is Syracuse. You're never going to make a lot of money in Syracuse. People aren't going to pay those prices in Syracuse. And I, I call bullshit on that because I watch you do it. I watch me do it. I watch a lot of my clients do things they never thought they could do in a place where everybody else is telling you it can't be done, it can't be done. But I, I know lots and lots of women who are actually doing it and lots of men also. So you are just serving as you're not, I mean, besides the incredible value that you bring to your clients and those families and the peace of mind you give them, because I know, I know how overgiving you are and I know how hard you work. And, and I love the, the point that you're making that you are, you're giving jobs to people in central New York. Like the leap that you made actually made this town better, you know, in so many ways, but you're also a model of confidence for people because you walk in and you just look at the problem and your first question is what needs to get done? And you just start going and you start going and you start going. So I know that you come in with a lot of confidence, but I have to ask, mm, were there always. any negative thoughts? Were there any like, Oh my gosh. You know, people think, Oh, you're so confident. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily confident. I fake it. I fake it like that saying fake it. I mean, Fake it till you make it. I, I, this is as hard and uncomfortable for me as it is for everybody else. In fact, the fact that we're doing this interview right now and it's going to be streamed on the internet is very intimidating for me. And Jen, we have spoken about that. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing it anyways. You know, um, I don't know what I look like. I don't know what I, what I'm going to look like. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but I'm doing it anyways because as you know, we, can only grow when we put ourselves in uncomfortable positions. Right. Um, and I, I seem to do it every day. You know, um, is it, is it gotten easier to do the things that I don't really want to do or step outside my comfort zone? Probably a little bit easier, but it's still hard, you know? Um, and I am no different than anyone else. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do whatever they want, whether they want to write a book, they want to publish a book or, Whatever the things that people, you know, they want to start a yarn business, what, you know, a little cafe, what's the worst that can happen? Mm. That's, that's what I stop, tell myself all the time. What is, cause I do have, there's a lot of things that can happen in my business. For sure. And you said before, you could always go back to what you used to do. It reminds me of this moment. I was living at my parents' house in my twenties, how, <clears throat> in my twenties. And I was dying to move out, but I was terrified and I wanted to move into Manhattan. And my stepmother said to me, you can always come back. And I think I was like 23. And I was like, oh, 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 yeah, I could just come back here if I wanted to. And I never, ever, of course, did. But right. you can go back to that thing. It, like you, you said, you could go back and be in our, you would get snapped up in five and a half seconds. Mm -hmm. if you wanted to go back to being yeah. in But, you know, I hope, I, I would love to be the inspiration for somebody that, can or is, has that idea and they're thinking about doing it and they're too afraid to make the next move. One of the things that I, that resonated with me when I started working with you was, and I think it was a seminar that I went to of yours. Um, stop worrying about the how and just do it. And that's kind of what I've, cause like when you said, when I first started this business, I didn't know what it was going to look like. I just knew that I had, you know, I think I called myself Gwen Cross at registered nurse consultant. Mm -hmm. And then I changed, then I started my company with complete harmony care solutions. Then I changed the name pretty quickly to constant care two, four, seven. Um, but I didn't know what any of that was going to look like. And it just has, has evolved and I've learned and I've made mistakes and I've, you know, learned what to do, what not to do. And I'm still learning. Um, and until I, you know, leave this business. I'm going to learn, I think every single day, because there's always something that comes up. Um, but that to me is exciting because it's never the same. And I meet a ton of people in this business. So. What do you do when you don't know something? Because I'm sure that there's things you bump into where you're like, 
oh, I haven't experienced that before. What the hell do I do with that? Mm-hmm. What is your go-to? Um, well, I have two employees that I, that I talk that out with and they're, they're a great support. Um, I also have another person that I'm in business <laughs> where she's the same type of business that I do. We, we, we consult once a week or more than that sometimes. Um, I have people, you know, I ask other people, I, I ask people that I trust my accountant who's a friend of mine, my husband, you know, he's, he's he, he knows his business inside now cause he lives with me and that's all I ever talk about. Well, actually I talk about it less than I did in the beginning, but I, I, I talked, I talked a lot about it. So he's, he's, he's there for me. Um, but I just, you know, I get online. I, I'm in, I'm in different chat groups mm-hmm. that have these types of businesses. I mean, I just, I look for support because yes. I can't do this by myself, even though I am by myself, but I, I can't. I so, totally get it. The, okay. the support is a common theme in these interviews. You have to look outside of your own brain to get, to get to the next place. And you're not afraid to do that. You don't have the opinion that if I ask for help, it makes me weak. Oh, I couldn't do it. I, I mean, Jen, since we've met and you, I mean, you don't know my business inside and out, but just the way that you're able to look at things and help me problem solve oh. is huge. I mean, it's, that was, it was a game changer for me, the, the coaching. Mm-hmm. I will say that. I mean, oh. I think we met and I was doing great financially, but grounding mentally and physically. You were pretty depleted, so, yeah. Yeah, I was about ready to shut this whole situation. Yeah, you get to that point <laughs> unless you have some balance. So right. when you started to make your dream real, <clears throat> we we always have to shift things around because we can't keep doing what we were doing or we'll get what we always got. So what did you shift in your life to bring the idea to life? Um, I think the, the major, major points that got me from when I, when I met you until, till now are, you know, um, putting some systems in place and help and, and having help with that. Um, that, that was something I never really, you know, I didn't create, I've never created a company before. I didn't know. And, and it grew so fast, you know, getting the people around me to help me, my employees, my, my, my dear, employees who I value so much and I have to say this one of the things that I didn't really feel when in corporate America was the value that I could bring to the table mm-hmm. and I hope and I and I work on this you know because I, I lean on my my employees a lot um, and they do a lot for me and I expect a lot from them but I also don't want them to ever think that I'm reaping all the benefits and they're doing all the work. Mm -hmm. Um, And so whether or not, you know, we, we give out bonuses or days, extra days off or flexibility with their scheduling, things like that to keep them loyal to me is, is huge because they are part of the reason why I am successful. Successful. (laughs) And I don't want them to feel unappreciated. So, so one of the things you shifted was a real focus on, um, showing your employees that they create a lot of value for you and compensating them and, and in lots of different ways so that they know that that was a, that was a big shift. It was a big shift. And, and also, you know, just it's, it's very difficult working in a small company because you're working very closely with people and you get to know their personal life and you, and you can, you know, the personal and the professional can sometimes get muddy. You know, the waters can get a little muddy, but with, with guidance from you, you know, just kind of really setting up some boundaries. And, and, you know, do we go, we, do we go over those boundaries? Absolutely. We're not all business. We have fun. You know, I know they know things about me. I know things about them that are not business related, but, um, I think I have a better understanding and balance of, of, that you know yeah so So boundaries I think are a big shift that a lot of women especially need to make but they often feel really guilty about having boundaries because there's a lot of stories around what it means if you put a boundary into place so I think that this is a really great point to make that if you want something for yourself because it will fill you up more then you actually need to put some boundaries in place because it serves you better but it also serves other people better when you have a boundary they know exactly what they can do and can't do and it, it serves everybody more Right. I'm glad that worked out. Um, what do you think, what do you wish that you had known or believed before you went through bringing this idea to life? 
if you could go back and talk to, you know, March 2017, Gwen, right before she started this, what would you want her to know? Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I guess I wish I would have planned it out a little bit better. And, and, but I'm, that's not me. And I just don't do things like that. And I'm never going to, and I've reconciled that with myself. I am just going to go ahead and do something and then it's all going to get worked out. Yeah. I have learned things about myself. What am I not good at? I'm not good at details. I don't like the little tiny details. I don't like scheduling. I don't like, you know, keeping my calendar. I don't like doing my accounting. So I've hired those people, those weaknesses, because those are weaknesses for me. I'm a big idea person. Love mm -hmm. the big ideas. I'm always figuring out other ways to start another business. You know, you, we've talked about that. Um, but I'm not, my, my office is a mess right now. <laughs> I don't like filing. I don't, you know, I don't like all those little details. So, um, so can I say that I would do that differently? Probably not because I probably couldn't do it or I probably just wouldn't do it. So what I hear you saying is know yourself, like know your, your strengths, know what is not your strength and get help with those things. But also the thing I love about the answer you just gave is there's no one right way to do it. Right. There's no and, one right way. And you've embraced that. Yeah. I love just, that. The only right way is to just do it and, and stop getting hung up on all the little, de all the little details that, that hold everybody back, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you, and then what I've kind of learned is I ask other people to do these things. And I, I think that people want to have it all planned out before they launch whatever there's and that holds people back. It, it totally does. I agree. Um, so I know that you've got a thriving business and that you've really done a lot of um, system to systemization and boundary creating and visioning for yourself to make this work for you in your life, to give you the freedom that you want while creating the money that you want. And I also heard you talk about the next thing that you're going to do. And so I want to know, this is all a lot of work. A lot Why of work. Do it? Why do you do it? Why is the world a better place because you're doing all this hard work? Um, you know, people do ask me that, you know, um, why, why are you doing all this? Why aren't you just taking the easy road or, um, you know, my brain needs the stimulus, the stimulation, my, my, my soul needs it. Mm -hmm. um, I think other people need me to do these things. I, I mean, I have, you know, I, I have definitely inspired some people in my life and I'm not going to, you know, trying to pat myself on the back, but I do remember this one little story about a nurse that I had met up at the dome and she, we were in, we were in one of those boxes, you know, mm -hmm. and I started talking to this, this waitress or, you know, server or whatever, whatever her title was. And, and she, I've come to find out she was a nurse and I'm like, why aren't you working as a nurse? And she's like, cause I haven't done it in so long. It's been 20 years. And you know what? I, our conversation is, I inspired her to go back into nursing. Yes. And how did I find that out? I never saw her again. Uh -huh. But I actually ran into her sister and we started a conversation and she oh. had told me that it just all came together. And she's like, Oh my gosh, you were the, you were the girl, the woman that spoke to my sister about yes. getting into this nursing profession and she loves it. Oh, she was afraid. So I, that was like a great story for me. You know, I just was like, I never, I never saw her again. Mm -hmm. And I, but I know she's out there in Syracuse someplace nursing. And also, but, can you speak a little bit about what it means to a family when you can get them the care that they need? Because I don't think anybody thinks about that until they're in the hell of a situation where they need you and they, nobody plans for this, right? Can you talk a little bit about the why behind what you see happening with your families? Well, nobody comes to me because they're in a good place. You know, not one person comes to me because they're happy and they, they like the situation that they're in or their family's in. Um, it's just like, you know, you're, you're, and everybody doesn't like attorneys until you need one. <laughs> nobody goes to an attorney <laughs> until they actually are, are in need of one. And it's never a good thing. So, um, and, and, you know, same here with healthcare, you know, um, uh, we all, we all are getting older. Our parents are getting older and the people that are my age, are working 
um, you know, mom and dad are working and uh, they're raising families. They're putting their kids through college. They're trying to save for their retirement. They're trying to go on vacation, all these things. And, or they don't live here in, in Syracuse. You know, a lot of people leave. My son just left and he says, tells me he's not coming back to Syracuse <laughs> to live. Um, but so, so I love the feeling when I'm able to make somebody's, you know, day better or put their mind at ease. Like we're going to, we're going to, we're going to come up with a plan and we're going to work this out and we're going to do the best we can with what we have, you know, and, and yes, my, my business is definitely private pay. There's no insurance. There's no insurance that covers this type of thing that I refer to and, and, and do. Um, but if, if people, you know, I'm a great resource for the community too. If people don't have money or they're spending down, what are, what are, what is that going to look like in the future and how can we make the, these people's lives the best that they can be and the better, the best quality that they can be because Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with people with progressing diseases and in old age and our elder population. Um, You know, we see our mom and our dad or whomever, our aunt and our uncle and, and we want what's best for them. So that's what I help people do. And, and that gives me, you know, when family says to me, I, I, I thank you. I couldn't have done this without you. You're the best. You're the greatest. It's not because of my ego. It's because I actually made, made it so they could sleep at night. Yeah. And, you, and, you, um, it fills you up to, mm-hmm. to help in that way. I also know personally that you, you know, you show up at times when nobody expects you to show up. You show up on Labor Day. You show up on Sunday night. You know, you've got people can have access to you they, that you really can put their minds at ease and solve a problem for them that they don't have. That is your zone of genius. You know how to find the resources to help the people who need your help. Right. And it, it, we, we aren't all born with that information. So you're just an amazing resource for people. So I'm so glad you're doing this. I mean, one of, one of the things to be a great nurse is to have, have those critical thinking skills mm-hmm. and to be able to solve problems. That's what we, that's what we do as nurses. We, we want to see a problem and, and make us some type of solution. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I mean, I can say that I'm good at that. I'm, you know, and that's, I think what makes you a good entrepreneur. And just to piggyback on that, a lot of, people in jobs right now, jobs like healthcare and education, those people feel stuck because they've got these golden handcuffs to a job that that's going to provide either healthcare or a retirement or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they don't see themselves as being able to create something. They're like, well, I'm just a teacher. I'm just a nurse. I'm just a fill in the blank. And what I know and what you know is at the core of being a good educator or a good healthcare provider is really being good at solving problems every single day with a lot of different types of people. And if you can solve problems, that makes you a good entrepreneur because all you're doing every day as an entrepreneur is solving problems. Right. And it's exciting and you get freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And I, and I love, I do love the freedom. Like I'm sitting in my home. My dogs are in the other, well, one dog is here somewhere. I don't know where she is. Um, and the other dog's in the other room. And, you know, I get my daughter from cross country practice. I can go to lunch with a friend. I, I, I have freedom. That, that is, that is huge. Um, especially, you know, when, I mean, I've worked three jobs. I've had, I used to be a cleaning lady. I did all kinds of things. Um, and, and now I'm here and, this is, you know, this was was not without a lot of hard work, but it was all worth it. So, so it's, what advice would you give to a creative woman like yourself who's teetering on, you know, the precipice? She knows that there's something more for her, but she's absolutely terrified. What would you say to her? You know what? Get rid of those toxic people and surround yourself with people that want you to succeed. And if you can't find that in your little inner circle that you're in right now, maybe it's your husband that's keep, you know, keeping you back, or maybe it's your, you know, you, you, there could be a multitude of different things. Just surround yourself with people, whether you have to use the internet and you have to, you know, there's, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of support out there. Um, and just do it, just do it. Just like, like Nike says. <laughs> <laughs> so when, if somebody was in need of your services, how can they get in touch with you? Um, they can just call us at our business number at 315 
447-2461. Somebody answers the phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's in the name. <laughs> Constant care, 24-7. Yep. And we, we don't just stick to a nine to five appointment schedule. I like, like Jen, you've said, I met with people on holidays, weekends, evenings. It just depends on, on what the need is out there. So is there a website for you guys? Um, not at this time. Well, there is a website, but it's under construction. Okay. There's a Facebook page though. Okay. So they can find you at Constant Care 24-7 on Facebook? Correct, yes. And give me an email address that people can connect with you. Um, ConstantCare247 at gmail.com. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Gwen, thank you so much for this, this, these insights and the time that you gave me. Um, I think that you're really inspiring because I know that you could really, like, given what you've created so far, you could really sit back now and you could be like, yeah, I did it. It's like running itself. I created the systems. I've got good people. Like you really have done a lot of the hard work, but you're not doing that. You're saying what's next. And it's so fun to watch. It's fun to work with you. And I really, I think you're going to be inspiring to a lot of people. And I really want people to know that this service is out there because uh, it's terrifying when somebody needs this kind of care and you, you can't provide it yourself. Um, So I'm so glad that you're, that you're doing this. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure working with you and we're going to continue to do so. So you can keep my head in the right, the right frame of mind. (laughs) I would love for you guys to drop a comment below and talk about what is one thing that you think is holding you back or what is one thing that Gwen said that really inspired you or resonated with you? What is a comment that you can drop to Gwen? And if you have any questions for her, go ahead and drop them there. She'll be looking at this video too. Thanks, Gwen. Thank you.